audience guide presented as a public service by this theater's management to help you select your motion picture entertainment? Well, that's what it is. And we urge you to learn these rating symbols and use them as a guide for you and your family. G means suggested for general audiences, all ages. M, suggested for mature audiences, parental discretion advised. R, restricted, persons under 16 not admitted unless accompanied by parent or adult guardian. X, persons under 18 will not be admitted. This seal in advertising indicates that the film was approved under the Motion Picture Code of Self-Regulation. A 12-year-old schoolboy stoned on reefer, marijuana. For years, we have debated the legal and medical ramifications of marijuana smoking. But for the most part, we've talked about adults. All our medical research has been done on adults. This report is not about adults and it is not about the occasional use of marijuana. It is about chronic marijuana smoking by American youngsters. Suddenly, in just the past few years, hundreds of thousands of American youngsters have become daily marijuana smokers. Not experimenters, not occasional users, but chronic smokers. In their own words, potheads. They smoke not just at weekend rock concerts. They smoke every day. And not just teenagers, but children. They are smoking reefer with a frequency and in ways that are potentially disastrous. Brian lives in Florida, but there are children like Brian in almost every American city. Children who, even before they enter high school, have become veteran marijuana users. How old were you when you started smoking regular? About eight and a half, nine. How often do you uh, get stoned? Almost every day. Uh, do many of your friends smoke at school? Yeah, almost all of them. About 20% don't. What grade are you going to be in this year? Eight. I burn all my income tax statements When I talk to a cop I'm always rude I don't pay my rent I cut out the president I just got a bad attitude I got no respect for a thought I just got a bad attitude. That's right. I 
got no respect for authority. My conduct in public is true. I'm a godless revert commie, and I smoke marijuana. I just got a bad attitude. I got no respect for authority. My conduct in public is true. I'm a godless reaper, gummy, and I smoke marijuana. I just got a bad or confused, get information or a pamphlet at most pharmacies or a health clinic. If you need help, see a doctor. grave decision on April 2nd, 1917, an anxious president, Woodrow Wilson, voices his forebodings. Once lead this people into war, and they'll forget there ever was such a thing as tolerance. To fight, you must be brutal and ruthless. Conformity would be the only virtue. <laughs> Days later, with the president leading as he must, America is at war. All doubts are now submerged. All separate voices drowned out by the great chorus of the war effort. Do your bit for the boys over there. The spirit of 17 on the American home front. A nation rallying to the war. Behind them, keeping the spirit moved, is the machinery of government. A new agency set up by the president under a journalist named George Creel with his Committee on Public Information, which will grow from a handful to 150,000, Creel tackles the war effort as a plain publicity proposition, the world's greatest adventure in advertising. It will be an all-star production, offstage and on. The March King, John Philip Sousa, drumming up sales of Liberty Bonds, with the star of the Metropolitan Opera, Anna Case, as soloist. Booth Tarkington, author of the bestseller Penrod, writes on American facts and German propaganda. Young novelist Edna Ferber turns out press releases for distribution to the Allies. So does America's preeminent man of letters, 
William Dean Howells, in behalf of the Creel Committee's Foreign Press Bureau. Mary Pickford and other stars of the infant medium, the movies, make personal appearances as salesmen for Uncle Sam. Comedian Marie Dressler in a gesture of warning to Kaiser Bill. To weld the people of the United States into one white-hot mass, instinct with fraternity, devotion, courage, and deathless determination. This is the mission in the words of George Creel. The country's artists are told, draw till it hurts. The draft, starting in July 1917, makes potential heroes of some three million men who will be called on to do their bit in uniform. Billy Sunday, the National League outfielder turned evangelist, tours the country with inspiring sermons. Rout the enemy, upset autocracy and set up liberty throughout the world. The president, who suffered such forebodings at the prospect of war, calls for force. Force without stint or limit. Righteous and triumphant force. Untouched by battle, the American landscape is altered by the war. Washington, once described as a drowsy capital, becomes a boom town in 1917. This is the time in American history when government grows into big government, spending almost as much on the 20-month war as in the previous century and a quarter of its history. Dozens of new agencies, a federal payroll that nearly doubles from 500,000 employees to almost a million, not to mention the unpaid volunteers. Liberty bonds, Allied relief, Red Cross,